This problem comes from a test that was given to students of engineering of electric and hybrid vehicles on Warsaw Institute of Technology. It may look like chemistry, but it's all physics. You may be wondering what the f is that? That's Faraday constant. And it appears in Faraday's laws of electrolysis. It comes as a bit of a surprise for me because I can solve it without using Faraday's laws. That is, of course, if you understand the problem, if you don't really get it and want a fast result, Faraday's laws may be the way. I will not use them. I'm not aiming to make you stupid. Now, to the solution. Mass of copper. 617,000 tons. Now it's n kilograms. I want to know how much copper atoms is in this, because I know that I'll need two elemental charges for every atom. This formula tells me that. The amount of moles, by definition, is mass of a sample divided by mass of one mole, or the amount of atoms in a sample over amount of atoms in one mole, an A. This is a physical constant, number of avocado, avocado number. Since I'm not really interested in number of moles, I will focus on this part. And this part gives me a formula for numbers of atoms. Number of atoms of copper equals to mass times avocado number over mass of one mole. All of this on the right side is given, so n is now given. If you can read, you know that number of electrons is twice that. Let's write it down. Now I want to calculate the amount of charge that can be carried by this number of electrons. Q equals number of electrons times charge of one electron, which is E. Now let's tackle the efficiency. You have to define efficiency. And you can do that using power, energy, or Church. And I think in this case, charge is the easiest way to define efficiency. Ideally, every electron that comes from a socket, it's not really wall socket, but you get the idea, goes to copper. That would be 100% efficiency. We don't have that. So, sum of electrons provided by electric current goes somewhere else. Where? Doesn't matter. We don't go to this reaction. Efficiency. This is charge that I put into the reaction chamber. Let's say in. And this is charge that actually goes into this reaction, into electrolysis. QL. Now pause the video and try to answer. This is Q in or QL. It's QL. I got QL, I need Q in. Current, by definition, is uh, charge over time. So charge is given by current times T. Electrical power, power of current at a given voltage, is given by formula U times I, which gives us a formula for I. I is P over U. If I combine those two, I get something like that. Q is equal to P times T over U. And this is Q in. This is charge that I pull out from a socket or a battery or whatever. This is the amount of charge that went into reaction chamber. And because of efficiency below 100%, not all of this charge actually reacted with copper. Now I shall combine this with that and that. QL is equal to 2M avocado number elementary charge 
mass of one mole of copper equal to Q in, which is equal to PT over U times eta. What am I supposed to calculate here? Um, average power P. Yeah, so P is this times this over this and this and this. There is something important about T, but before I get to that, I have an announcement. This video is dedicated to my ex-neighbor, friend, brilliant musician, and future IT expert, Nigel Powell. Nigel, I'm eternally grateful for you being ready back then in July on Chimney Meadows to not let me drown in Thames River. Thank you. Also, I'm still supporting Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire Wildlife Trust. So feel free to revisit Chimney Meadows. It's on me. Let's get back to it. T. T is one year. And one year is, to be exact, 365 days. Point two five six. That's a decent approximation. If you plug in the numbers into that formula, you come up with something like 19.4 megawatts of power. No far less laws require it. Oh, and also, don't buy copper from Poland. Why, you may ask? Because electricity in Poland is really, really dirty. It's mostly made of coal. Yeah, people in Poland still use coal, not just to generate electricity. They use coal to heat their homes. The fumes are toxic, but who cares? Coal is cheap. Although it isn't, there are some hidden costs. New filter for air cleaner every two weeks. In Britain, you don't need air cleaner at all. In Poland, you very much do. Poland seems to be in 20th century. Um, what was it? Engineering of electric and hybrid vehicles, right? Hybrid vehicles. Everyone knows that hybrid vehicles has no future. It will be electric, it will be fuel cell, but not hybrid. So half of time of those students is basically wasted. You may say, who cares, they pay for that. Except they don't. In Poland, every level of education is free. Taxpayer money is going to waste. Well, half waste. Electric is not waste, hybrid pretty much is. As you can see, you don't need to use Faraday laws to solve this problem. If you have a deep understanding of it, on I mean on microscopic level, then it poses no difficulties at all. It's pretty straightforward. When I see Faraday constant in a problem like that, I think A, author of a problem, doesn't really understand it on a deep enough level. Or B, he wants his students to be thoughtless and just plug in the numbers into a given formula. I haven't decided yet which option is worse. They are both horrible. Plugging numbers into a given formula is not physics. It will not make you smarter, it will make you stop thinking for yourself. That kind of problems will produce an army of thoughtless robots. They can solve problems really fast and accurate, but only typical problems that they have formulas for. No creativity at all. It was killed by Warsaw University of Technology. That's really sad.